Welcome, everyone, to this episode of Field Notes. I'm Brad Puffer on the Medical Office Communications Team at Fresenius Medical Care North America and your host for this discussion today. Here we interview the experts, researchers, physicians, and caregivers who bring experience, compassion, and insight into the work we do every day. Low levels of albumin have been associated with increased mortality in patients on dialysis, according to many studies. Albumin is a type of protein made by the liver, and it keeps fluid from leaking out of blood vessels while nourishing tissues and transporting hormones, vitamins, drugs, and substances like calcium throughout the body. So maintaining healthy levels of albumin is important for patients living with chronic kidney disease. To help us better understand the importance of managing albumin levels and to discuss a recent journal publication about this issue is Dr. Cam Callenter an expert in kidney diseases and epidemiology, and professor of medicine at the University of California, Irvine School of Medicine. He is also a medical director for a Fresenius Kidney Care Center. Dr. Callenter, welcome to Field Notes. Thank you very much. Well, I provided a very brief explanation of what albumin is and why it's important, but I'm wondering if you can elaborate and from your physician perspective, explain why we should care about albumin. Serum albumin is an important protein. It's uh, probably the most abundant protein in our circulations, in our blood. So serum albumin has a number of important functions. One of them is to maintain the hemodynamic stability within the cardiovascular system. But there are also important other functions, such as Uh, maintaining the nutritional status. Also, the molecule is a carrier. That means it it carries different other molecules, such as vitamin D and thyroid-related hormones and other things uh, throughout the circulation or through the bloodstream to other parts of the body. Also, it's a defense mechanism in, in that serum albumin is used to remove certain unwanted molecules in the blood and and therefore if i want to go over so many important functions of uh, circulating albumin it will go beyond the scope of today's presentation but suffice it to to say that whether we are healthy with no disease states or we have disease states such as chronic kidney disease serum albumin plays an important role so, Dr. Callenter, then how do you go about determining those albumin levels in your patients with kidney disease? Is this something that you measure every day, and are you talking to your patients about routinely? Yes, sir. Albumin is actually measured every month in essentially all dialysis patients. So, if we have over half a million dialysis patients in the United States, their serum albumin is checked every month. So, that should highlight the importance of this measurement. It's measured through high listeners method, and it's compared to other patients and compared to the same patient over time to see if there is any trend, upgoing, downgoing trends, and, and how patient is doing. Is this something then you touch base with your patient about every time you, you round or discuss with them? Yes. Then one of the areas that usually, I mean, you measure something, you are now responsible, you have to translated into patient's language. So I, I tell my patient, I said, since I'm also medical director of a, a FKC, is a large FKC dialysis center in Southern California, during my weekly rounds, when I have the serum albumin of the months available, I always tell the patients that, uh, Mr. Smith, Miss Jones, this is your serum albumin. It's going to the wrong, uh, correct direction or not quite correct direction. These are things that we share with essentially all patients. Well, then what are the key causes of low albumin and how do you fix that? Yeah, that's actually, as you astutely mentioned, low albumin. Why? Because I would like my patients to have higher serum albumin. I think I'm not the only nephrologist. We 12,000 nephrologists, uh, by providing care to CKD and Dallas patients, we would like our patients to be resilient, to do well. Patients should to live well with kidney disease as well as living well. And serum albumin, high serum albumin is a strong predictor of that. And I would like to make sure it's serum albumin is not low and low serum albumin could happen. Usually it's referred to certain low serum albumin as a marker of nutritional status. That is malnutrition. Now it's called protein energy wasting. 
But those serum albumin could also happen due to inflammation, infection, and also loss of albumin during the dialysis treatment. If the dialysis treatment, uh, as we hopefully going to discuss how this could happen. So altogether, serum albumin, very precious protein that needs to be cherished and uh, maintained. And it sounds like nutrition is a big key factor in maintaining uh, high levels of albumin. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. That means that by providing good nutrition, serum albumin is hopefully preserved or, or even improved and increased. But uh, this is not the only factor that determines the level of serum albumin in the blood. Well, as we get to those other factors, you know, you mentioned that high levels of albumin is associated with good outcomes. But uh, I mentioned in the beginning that unfortunately, low levels of albumin are associated with uh, morbidity and mortality as well. There's a lot of studies that have made that link, correct? Yes, the studies are relatively consistent in that low serum albumin is a predictor of poor outcome. And the opposite also, high serum albumin is a predictor of longevity. And the consistency of these studies have been remarkable, especially in dialysis patients. It's interesting that in the general population also, Old and emerging data suggests that your serum albumin, that means in myself and yourself, is a very important predictor and determining factor. But in dialysis patients, in patients on dialysis, this is a very important market. That means if your serum albumin is low, we have a high risk situation. And if, if serum albumin of my dialysis patient is higher, the higher the better, to the point that there is no way I can say that I'm, I'm satisfied. I try my best to increase serum albumin higher in all of my patients on dialysis. And what is that target range that you're, you're seeking? And can too much be a bad thing? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to say that too much is not a bad thing. But, but first of all, we have a challenge because only 30 to 40% of our patients have a serum albumin above 4.0 grams per deciliter. So this is answering your question, what is the uh, target threshold? Normal serum albumin in uh, most laboratory centers is described as 3.5 to 5.7. But I'm here to say what is not coming from me, but coming from the literature over the past 30 plus years, as well as the experts that we would like our dialysis patients to have a serum albumin at least above 4.0 around 30 to 40 percent, and if we are very lucky, maybe half of our patients achieve that goal. And why is it so hard to maintain that albumin for dialysis patients? Well, dialysis patients, patients on dialysis are dealing with uh, many other problems. They have comorbid states. They have uh, other problems, infection, inflammation, also protein energy wasting. And on top of that, they receive dialysis therapy and if you are not careful with their dialysis therapy, dialysis membrane could be a, a source to maintain and preserve that pro protein store, or could be also a, a gateway to losing more albumin. We talked about how there's more to preserving albumin than just nutrition. Um, can you talk about some of those other factors? And my understanding that is even dialyzers can play a role, correct? That's exactly what I was trying to uh, mention uh, or go over. Why? Because this is your dialysis patient. The dialysis patient is coming here. And uh, on average, most dialysis patients undergo three times a week dialysis. Of course, there are also twice weekly dialysis patients. There are four times or five times a week dialysis patients. But assuming on an average three times a week, a patient comes to the dialysis center for three to four and a half hours of dialysis therapy, if the choice of dialysis membrane is not correct, then we have added yet another risk factor for low albumin, which is called hypoalbuminemia. That means the dialysis membrane, which is supposed to be there to provide clearance to the patient, now could become a source of uh, loss of uh, albumin. Well, you've studied the topic in depth. I mentioned uh, in my intro that you actually were the lead author of an article that published in the International Journal of Nephrology and Renovascular Disease called Slipping Through the Pores. What was the biggest takeaway of your study? I know you spent some time looking at dialyzers. 
Yes, so looking at different types of dialyzers and the dialyzers, for example, that are currently available, we're very proud and pleased to use those that are available in, in our dialysis centers as compared to also certain dialysis membranes that are being uh, manufactured for certain uh, indications. So, so here is very important to really understand what the indication of some of these uh, dialysis membranes are and what the uh, challenging aspects or some of the uh, uh, drawbacks of some of these are. So the study you're talking about, this is a study where we reviewed five other studies. That means we, one of, uh, I mean, our goal was to put together the results of five other studies that uh, comparing high flux dialysis membranes, this is high flux dialysis membranes is what we are using in our dialysis centers as compared to a new generation of dialysis membranes uh, that are considered uh, having high level of permeability. I mean, allowing more of these middle molecules to, to cross. And, and as I said, those things have certain indications. For example, let's say if you have a patient with uh, abnormal proteins, such as multiple myeloma, let's say a blood cancer or bone marrow cancers, then probably it's where I could use those dialysis membranes with larger pores. But would I be happy to use these membranes with high level of permeability for, for routine dialysis treatments of my patients? That's a very important question. As a question, is not, not only pertains to me and my dialysis patients, but to all 12,000 uh, nephrologists and all 550,000 dialysis patients in the United States and all other countries. And you've studied this topic in depth, correct? For a long time, uh, Dr. Callenter. In fact, earlier this year, you were the lead author on a review that published in the International Journal of Nephrology and Renovascular Disease called Slipping Through the Pores. What was the biggest takeaway from your research? Yes. In fact, studies are also relatively consistent that the high flux dialyzers that we have been using, when studies are done correctly, they show that a patient with low serum albumin who starts dialysis therapy with uh, some of or, or most of these high flux dialyzers not only maintain serum albumin but also shows a tendency towards increasing serum albumin, which is very important. Data, again, I'm going to repeat, are consistent. If serum albumin is higher, patient lives longer, patient does better. And if I change serum albumin over time, it's not just static albumin. If I change serum albumin over time, that means I increase serum albumin, patient's longevity improves. So this is essentially a very important portion of my responsibility to make sure that the high flux dialysis I prescribe to my patients, they do the job and that I'm, I not switch that to something that could lead to loss of albumin of these dialysis patients. Well, I think that's the key point you make there because I'm sure we can't 100% say you know, the dialyzer is causing the increase in albumin, but you know that serum albumin can go up, especially with the right nutrition and other interventions with a high flux dialyzer. But what you're saying is you're not necessarily seeing that with these other dialyzers. In fact, you're seeing loss regardless. So I would, I assume as a physician, if you're working closely with your patients and you're getting their nutrition the right way to increase albumin, but a dialyzer is then stripping that albumin away, that's a problem for you. That's a serious problem. Let me tell you why. Because I do everything in my power, as you, again, as you did mention, from nutrition to, to providing adequate protein and also avoiding or treating inflammation, treating infection, and anything that could, could uh, interfere with albumin generation and maintenance. So I do all these things, and, and it would be heartbreaking that while I'm also providing dialysis therapy, that the, the choice of membrane is the one that could, could lead to the, to the loss of this asset. That means serum albumin. This is the protein. This is the most important protein-based asset that my patients have. So, so it's, it's an important level of responsibility and accountability for us uh, dialysis care providers, nephrologists, to ensure that, that we do not cause any risk by considering or ordering dialysis membranes 
that could also be used for certain circumstances. As I said, maybe those uh, highly permeable or protein leaking dialyses are very good for certain disease states, rare disease states such as multiple myeloma. But would it would I help my patients by providing these uh, uh, protein leaking dialyses to everybody or to most of my patients? That's actually a very important and serious question for all of us. Albumin may be something that most physicians are familiar with or comfortable talking about. Do you think as many uh, think about this loss as much as they should? And what would your recommendation be to physicians about albumin? Yes, actually, a good dialysis membrane should not lead to any loss of albumin. I mean, serum albumin should maintain. If I use the high flux dialyzers that are currently available and are being used, including in our uh, dialysis center. However, there is a discussion about use of uh, the so-called high, highly per- permeable or middle cutoff dialyzers, and, uh, and, and studies are relatively consistent that they lead to loss of albumin levels. And sometimes justify that there are so many other good benefits coming out of this membrane, and let's ignore that loss. That's the price. And I wouldn't agree with that. Why should we pay a price? I mean, such a this is a very expensive price. This is a very high price. If I, if I want to do something for my patients at the cost of losing albumin during the dialysis therapy. You've been pretty passionate about this issue uh, for a long time. Do you think uh, other physicians are starting to realize how important this issue is? I believe so. Uh, it As I said, studies have shown consistently if there is one marker if we are going to choose one laboratory measure as the strongest predictor of survival and longevity, that's serum albumin. Of course, there is also hemoglobin, phosphorus, calcium, and other things. But the one that is has been consistently associated with strongest prediction of survival is serum albumin. I'm not the only one who is proud of my serum, the serum albumin levels of my patients, and I'm not the only one who's as you use the keyword passion, we should all be passionate about this because these are patients. The patient have trusted us. They, they, they have chosen dialysis for their hopes and longevity. And I have every reason to ensure that they achieve those goals. What would be your biggest piece of advice to physicians about how they can even better incorporate discussions of albumin and thinking about this issue, especially when talking to their patients? We nephrologists, we should continue to provide the great care that my colleagues are providing, ensuring adequate nutritional status, good nutritional status and adequate uh, adequate nutritional supply, high protein diet, supplements, if necessary, timely and effective treatment of infections and inflammatory causes of uh, problems. But at the same time, we should know that uh, nothing should be justified by uh, providing something greater at the uh, expense of uh, loss of protein, which is albumin. So we should really continue to be passionate about this. We should uh, be aware of the consistency of the data and we should do the best for our patients. That means ensuring that their serum albumin levels remain high. Well, I think that's a great way to end this conversation, Dr. Callender. It's uh, really been interesting. And, and thank you so much for joining us uh, to discuss your research and passion for this subject. My pleasure. Thank you. And to our audience, thank you for joining us. Please know that your feedback is always welcome. If you have comments on today's episode, topics of interest to you or speakers you want to hear from, let us know by clicking the feedback link featured on the Field Notes website on fmcna.com. And don't forget, you can find Field Notes on the Apple Store or Google Play or right here at fmcna.com, where you can also find our annual medical report and other featured articles. We hope you'll come back and join us as we have many more topics to discuss in the weeks ahead. Until next time, I'm Brad Puffer, and you've been listening to Field Notes by Fresenius Medical Care. Take care, everyone.